Well, if it's Tuesday, we're in the collector's attic, but as you can see, this is a little bit of a different one. <laughs> it is. Well, we were at the train show last uh, last Sunday, and next Sunday we're back at the train show to show you guys the work on this amazing roundhouse. But rather than show you some of our collectibles from up in the attic, we wanted to show you somebody else's collection. Uh, Fred Bainey brings his collection to all of the shows, and he shows it to everybody. And he's been collecting Union Pacific locomotives uh, from 1940 to 1980, his goal being to duplicate every style of engine they operated during that 40-year period. Oh, my. <laughs> wow. It's quite a project. He's almost got them all, too. Go figure. Union Pacific ran a lot of different types of engines. Look at that. I can see that. And some of them very unusual. Union Pacific was well known for running some pretty unusual pieces of equipment during that period. Uh, some of which are pretty garden variety and they ran a lot of them. Others are just really, really unique and different, some of which are completely one-of-a-kind locomotives that only appeared on the Union Pacific, and even there, maybe Union Pacific only had one or two of them. Just mm. some really unusual stuff. So question, Uh huh. just for a novice like myself, why is the hood, if you will, of the locomotive painted green? Off for glare. For glare. When they painted them yellow, the sun would bounce off of there oh. and blind the crew. So they started painting them green. Well, that's interesting. Isn't that cool? Do you see that almost locomotive at the far back? Yes. That's just a gigantic weight. It's called a slug. And the number on it is S7 for slug. Oh. It's just electric motors and a big weight. Oh. And, and it gets its power from the other engine. Well, Okay, how, that's that's that, <laughs> how's that for different? Different. Yeah. Different. And a lot of railroads did that, but Union Pacific had a few of them, hence the really no low number seven. Aye. It's really neat to see them all laid out like this, all the different types of locomotives that they ran. I don't know that much about diesels except for what they called the covered wagons, the E's and the F's. The F stood for 1,400. The E stood for 1,800. How about that? Because that was their horsepower. Oh, okay. Now, now it makes sense. Now it makes sense. This is an E unit here. Union Pacific still has three operating E units in the Heritage Fleet. And the engine to the far left here is turbine number 50. And that's a really significant engine. There was only ever one of those. Oh. And it's a double-ended turbine, and it was really a proof of concept. General Electric built this thing for the Union Pacific to, to demonstrate that it would actually work, and it did. And so they built uh, nine of these. And this was uh, the same basic unit, but it's not double-ended. And then it carries a, a tender because these things have a way of really going through fuel. And this one ran on uh, liquid petroleum gas. So the tender back there is an LP gas tank. The crews were terrified of it. Oh, they thought it was going to blow up. Thought? It didn't, I, but it, it probably should have, actually. I would have been worried, yes. <laughs> and then, and then they, they went to this style of turbine, the veranda-style turbine. So Fred's got them all here, uh, just one each. This is the final version of the turbine, the 8,500 horsepower three unit turbine and we just saw one of those at the uh, Ogden uh, train show and the Ogden Depot they've got one but turbines very very unique and all of these were built just for the Union Pacific that's not to say other railroads didn't run turbines but uh, Union Pacific was well known for these General Electric turbines but a lot of other trains here a lot of other style of engines notice the silver train back there this guy the Aero Train. And, and people are well, that was never Union Pacific. Well, actually, for a brief period, it was. Union Pacific leased one of the two Aero Trains and ran it as the city of Las Vegas. Oh, wow. So, since it was on the system. And then uh, these are fallen flag locomotives. So any of the railroads absorbed into the Union Pacific. And then these are some of the steam engines from that same era. Fred's not really trying to collect all of the steam engines, 
but some of the more significant steam engines from that era. So that's pretty neat, and I guess this is the part of the collection he's working on now, is adding more steam engines to the fleet. My guess is he'll collect quite a few. Well, he just keeps, he well, and, and these are just kind of garden variety engines. Oh, oh. <laughs> the 119, oh. it isn't really from that era, is it? <laughs> it mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is from that era, and it's everybody's favorite engine right now, 4014, the big boy. And it was at the Evanston Roundhouse here just a few months ago, and in fact, it's coming back in October. How about that? That is neat. So we all got to enjoy chasing the big boy back in May, and we get to repeat this entire excursion all over again. <laughs> Here in just a few weeks, really. Wow. Uh, it's not that far off. No, October. it isn't. No. Well, if you're not a subscriber, here comes your golden, or in this case, blue, opportunity. Well, we're not sure how you found this rather unusual collector's attic on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. And we will see you here on Sunday as we go back to the roundhouse.